Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gimp of the Limp, and I've got a special treat here for you guys today. And that's actually more likely a special treat for myself because it's something that I don't get to do very often. Uh, something that you guys probably don't know is that when you've got a channel like this and you're doing games, and I'm sure there's plenty of other uh, creators out there that will back me up on this, most of the time the stuff that you're filming isn't necessarily the thing that you want to play right then. It's just whatever you got on the docket that you got to fill because you got some review copy or someone's asking you for a favor. Hey, can you film this for me? Whatever it is. So more often than not, the, the chain of games that you guys see me throwing on screen for you aren't necessarily what I'm picking out to play on my own or what I would pick to play if I had a little free time. And my guilty pleasure is the Ameritrash dice rolling dungeon crawly type games. All right. The ones where it's, you know, hex based or room based, area based, whatever it is. But you've got a area map, you know, map boards, map tiles of different varying shapes and sizes. And you've got miniatures and you're moving through and rolling whatever little special dice come with the game. And you're trying to beat all the bad guys that come with the game and having little boss fights and whatever it happens to be. That's my, my guilty pleasure. So what you're looking at is actually my birthday present that the wife was nice enough to get for me. Uh, we actually were able to find a Kickstarter copy of the new Hellboy game. I had actually not backed it on Kickstarter, but I was able to trade in some games, get a little credit, and uh, able to get this for my birthday. So I was very happy about that. It's got all the Kickstarter bonuses and crap that uh, come with that. But the scenario that I've got set up for you guys and all the characters are all base games. So it's if you were to get a base copy of the game, you could easily recreate everything that I've got on screen for you now. So what is Hellboy? Well, Hellboy is what I was just describing. It's a miniatures based game where you go through and you're doing investigations and you're trying to stop whatever it is. It's got a little, little story going on and I'm not going to spoil a whole lot of the story for you guys. I'm going to try to avoid uh, as much of that as possible. That's why I'm picking a case that I think this is like the second or third case in. Uh, so many other people, I've seen some other YouTube videos that where they were doing like the first case, the little tutorial one. So that one's been covered to death. We're, we're going to get the next one going in where it's got a different boss, I think, in it. But we'll, we'll touch on that here in a sec. But over here, this board is kind of what runs your investigation. So when you pick it, actually, let me grab one. You'll pick an investigation and it'll be in a little pack like this. You see, it says case file, stop. You know, you shouldn't read this yet, blah, blah, blah. It's got spoilers. So the first time you play this, you're not gonna know what's coming up and you'll have a stack of these cards and it'll tell you how to read the cards. So you'll have a card like this that has a little blurb and because a lot of people don't like this and I don't like having to speed through it when I watch others, if you want to know the whole story behind this, pause it and read it for yourself. But yeah, I, I watch other people's videos and they'll read out these blurbs and blah, 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 and it's boring. So yeah, pause it if you want to read it. It's right there. We're zoomed in and say, Meh. but the short version is there's a BPRD. It is BPRD. Yeah, BPRD agent who has sent an SOS, but that's all the information you've got. So you've come to this house where he is and you're trying to figure out what's going on. So as you go through the cards, right, they'll be stacked up like this and you put them on this location. You'll read the cards and then it tells you what to do. So you'll read the first side, you flip it over and you see the back side tells you how you're going to set it up. And we'll touch on that here in just a sec. But the rest of the cards in this deck, we can't even keep reading on just yet because they all pertain like that. There's other cards underneath here that explain what happens in this mission. And I actually haven't played this mission yet. So we're going to see what happens together as we go through this. And that's the neat part. There's other cards up here. We'll touch on those again here in just a little bit as well that it'll tell you to put in the play area. That's what this area is up here. Not these tokens. I just have them set there for, for play purposes. But if something affects the story or it could potentially uh, cause the boss fight, you'll put it up here and you'll put like a marker. So for example, this one, without getting long winded on it, basically if the boss fight starts because of this doom tracker marker getting over to here, that's why you've got the little A and A on it, then you'll read this card, flip it over, read the other cards associated with it. So it's a neat little system that they've got when it comes to these investigation cards on how it's going to work. You're going to just start at the top 
and work your day way about work your day work your way down through the deck reading the front and the back and make sure you take your time when you're reading the cards because sometimes you'll get confused on what it is and you'll read a little too far you know i did that on some of my investigations so go slow take your time and it'll tell you what to do like the back of this card shows you the deck of doom which you guys will see when we start playing is going to be organized with all of these cards and each one of the cards that's in this deck has one of these associated symbols on it where it's got that little, where it's got me dropping the card where it's got like that little hourglass which that gray one's kind of like the generic one that's going to always make up the decks and then there's special ones that will be included so this has like the green backwards e and the purple y cards are going to be in it as well plus all the investigator dependent. So you see like the first one's Hellboy. Basically what that symbol means is any investigators that you're using, any of the hero characters, they have specific Doom cards as well. And you'll include those for anyone that you have playing. So obviously I have Hellboy, Abe, Johan Kraus, and Liz. All of their cards are part of this deck as well. So therefore, cards because i think it's just one each and then the cards associated with those symbols now the encounter deck is kind of neat because you see how it's adjusted per the amount of agents so the less agents that you have playing the easier the encounter deck's going to be i like how that's kind of set up but it'll tell you what color and it's the same thing the encounter cards which are located right here. And I don't want to spoil those for you yet, so I'll show them more specifically, but it'll have a list of four items on it, and it's basically what's going to spawn enemies and clues and other things throughout the mission. So you have a little stack of them here that you'll draw for each one of the areas as you go into them, and it'll tell you which ones specifically put in there. So since I have four agents, I have one yellow, one red, and three green, in my deck but you'll notice there's more areas than that and a couple of these already have cards on them and that's because you see for some damn reason these cards like are curved and i don't know if it's just my pack or not but all of the damn cards are curved like that and it's driving me friggin nuts like the the, the resource cards the requisition cards aren't like that but the all the doom deck the bigger cards, the Doom deck and the Investigation deck are all freaking curved. And I keep dropping them because of that shit. Anyway, you see how these two cards are there. And you see there's a special rule there before uh, dealing out, blah, 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 put face down white cards in these rooms. So these are like special encounter cards. So when we get to these rooms, something different will happen than the generic encounter cards we're going to see when we go into these other rooms. And then obviously there at the bottom of it, you see the board layout and shows you there in the top left, you see that little circle starting area shows you where you're going to start. And then there's icons there, obviously for the doors, which are located here, which you can just, hey, when the door is open, you can just flick it to the side like that or pull it off the board, whichever way, you know, you want to do it. It's, you know, your game. So you see at the bottom of this card, it says discard this card after uh, placing the encounter card. So after we've done that, bam, we do it like that. And that's when I read those cards, the front of them that told me, hey, these are things that are going on like the top. Shows you here, put a reaction marker on this card. That's that little A one. And then to put one there on the Doom track, depending on how many agents that we're going to have. But it says you know don't flip this card over don't read the back of it but once that uh once your tracker gets there that's when you're going to look so like here it says if the do marker reaches the trigger or everyone gets knocked out that's when you're gonna flip this card so i don't know what's on the back of this card and there, it says you know take the next card with it so i don't know what's on these two cards we're gonna find that out later with my little marker you see a little a so we'll put our a on there there's our a the spot six and the doom track is basically a time limit is the the easiest way to think about it it's going to take you've got this long before the end encounter is um 
kicked off and the little one with the book. And like I said, this is uh, the Kickstarter version. That's why there's little tokens here and uh, or not tokens, little miniatures here for these uh, spots instead of little cardboard tokens that would come in the base game. And this one is like your investigation because there is a neat thing involved with this that as you go along, right, and you're investigating and getting clues and stuff like that, you can gain bonuses that will actually apply in the boss fight. So as your guys know more, like that's what it's symbolizing, you've learned about your enemy, you'll have extra bonuses and you can upgrade your dice attacks against whatever boss it is you happen to be fighting. I think I know which boss this is, but I'm not entirely sure until I actually read down into the cards. And this other marker here, the one that says B, and it's associated with this card, actually has to do with this investigation marker with uh, the investigation track. So as we gain points here, that's where we're going to get our bonuses. Sometimes you'll have clues spread across the map, and that's what's going to cause you to gain, uh, what are those tokens called? It's like investigation tokens or resolve tokens, stuff like that. It's these little gray ones here that have a little BPRD symbol. On them, but you want to gain those because they give you a bonus. Now, you guys can't see it yet, but you will see it here in a little bit. But on the back side of this is actually the monster, the boss monster's uh, health track and details. And the that's where you actually keep the boss monster's event cards that tells what its behavior is going to be. So once you hit that, it's called the confrontation, the, the boss fight that you're going to see in the movie. Like when Mila Djokovic comes out and she's doing her witch thing and Cowboys beating her ass. And I gotta say, I liked the new movie. You guys put it down below. If you liked the new movie, you thought it was better. I liked the R rating. I liked the fact there was blood and guts. It's Hellboy. It's what's supposed to be in it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Rodden Perlman. He's great. He did good as Hellboy. But I liked the new one. I wish to God they were doing a sequel. I've really enjoyed it. I'm goofy like that, though. Sometimes I'll like movies that, you know, have a bad, like, critical review. A lot of people think, I don't know, this movie's crap. And, you know, for me, it's just a, a cult classic, you know, like the old classic, The Rocketeer. Gala. Anyway, you know, back to it. The, the boss fight's going to be on the back. And then here at the bottom, you can actually see all the different minions that we're going to have. Now, the minions that we're fighting in this are the frog monsters. So we got a bunch of these little guys. And when it comes to minis, when I'm playing a game like this, when it's the main character, like Hellboy, you see, I tried to do a good job painting him. I mean, it's not perfect by any means. All these guys were like gray and shit like that when they came out of the box, but I went ahead and painted them up. But it's it's decent, you know, it's passable. But I do my best on them. I'll try to do the best that I can for the main miniature, uh, miniatures and the boss characters. But when it comes to the, the minis, the just multitude of minion bad guys, I want to have like... Was it the three foot rule? Like you'll have in 40K that it's got to look good three feet down on the table, you know, a couple of colors, three color best, something like that. Because I don't want to spend hours upon hours trying to paint it up. I've still got minis that I'm trying to, to finish up, you know, painting for this. Anyway, uh, let me stop getting distracted. But these are the minis, the uh, minis, minions that we're going to fight here in this mission. We got rampaging and transforming, venomous and uh, armed frog monsters and you can have different types now if you have only the base version of the game this is something that i don't like the only generic baddies that come with the base version of the game are these versions all right just the frog monsters if you do get a deeper version of the game a kickstarter or expansions that's where you'll have the extra uh, types of enemies, which I really do think for a game like this, you're going to want to have that because you'll get a little worn out finding the same uh, types of enemies. Like I've got Nazis, like officer, Nazi officers, machine gunners and stuff like that. And then werewolves and attack dogs and bats and witches and what is it something else like attack crows or turkey, evil turkey or something like that. Isn't it too? So I would recommend the Kickstarter version if you can get it just depending on the price you know, they're going for like 150 to 200 and i've seen them going higher just depending but you can actually get the base version for relatively cheap and i've enjoyed it so i recommend it anyway so that's where it's going to locate on your minis and your encounter cards here are going to say something like spawn minion a or spawn minion c or two of minion c and that's why you have these enemy cards here besides just giving you your stats and what they're going to do 
this is what uh, is used to tell you what's spawning on the board. So if you draw a card for here and it says spawn minion A here, spawn minion C here, put a clue here, scenery there, stuff like that. You guys will see that when we start playing here in a bit. But if you want, you can switch these out for the other generic enemies if you do have them. These guys up here, this is what's called the Threat Track. Now, in the base game, there's just three round tokens that you're going to put there of the different colors, like our little red, or you see the plastic pieces there on the bottom of all of their uh, all the minis there. There's little cardboard tokens that would go here, and that's how you would keep track of it. I do like how this has a big bust version of the guys to have there. That looks pretty cool. So what this is going to be used for is to determine who the enemy is going to attack. So they're going to start with the highest threat, which is obviously Hellboy. But once they attack Hellboy, then everyone else is going to move up and Hellboy goes to the back of the track. And that's how they're going to rotate around. There's different times in the game where the, the threat track is going to move around back and forth. But the general gist is you're going to have a little train going on with this. So the first minion might attack this one, but then she rotates around and, and it keeps going that way. So you're not going to have them just attacking the same guy all the time. It's an interesting way for them to try to change things up from the usual rule of they attack the closest or roll a d6 to see who they're going to attack the the usual thing that you would have in a game like this determining who the enemy is going to attack all right so let's show some of the cards real quick for our guys and that will pretty much cover the basics of the game and we'll jump into showing you guys some actual hellboy gameplay uh the big thing for this Actually, everything kind of matters when it comes to these cards. I was going to say it's really these icons up here, but there's their special abilities and these special abilities all matter. And then their starting cards, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, up here at our top left, we have our melee attack, ranged attack, examination. So like gaining clues for this track up here that I was telling you about and your defense, which I think Hellboy's defense should be higher, but they probably didn't want to have two stats that are red. So this is a really neat idea that they have going with this because this is color coded to the dice in the game. So when you make a melee attack, you're going to use the red dice, which are the best. So let's show you the dice real quick so you understand what I'm talking about. You have yellow, orange, red, and the black red, you know, black dice, and it's weakest to strongest. So when Hellboy makes a melee attack, he's going to use the red dice with every dice roll that you make includes this blue special die, which we'll get into when we actually start talking about the game or actually start playing the game. But obviously these being the best, the red ones can go up to like three and then they only have one blank spot. I think the orange ones go up to like two and only have two blank spots. And then the yellow ones are 50-50, either one or nothing. So you've got three sides with one and then three sides that are blank on your yellows. And then the black ones actually go up to four. I believe in, yeah, they go up to four and have no blank sides. So it's a real neat system that they had. I would have liked to have seen something different. I'm so tired of D6s because it's always D6s. I guess they get them a bulk sale from China or some shit instead of doing D8s or D12s or something different for a change. But it is nice to have a color-coded system in this and that you know, okay, when he's making an attack with melee, he's using these dice. But if he's using... A ranged attack he's going to use these dice or if he's making a defensive attack he'll use whatever so it's real easy to tell now when it comes to doing these things you can change them you can get uh, upgrades or downgrades and that's basically your modifiers that you're going to have for anything so if you get a one modifier up you would exchange one die for one die of the higher color black obviously being the highest that you can get so rolling three blacks with the blue special die is the best that you can possibly have. Just briefly on our special rules like this with Hellboy, he can uh, increase his examine skill, having it get two upgrades instead of one upgrade. Because say you spend one action, that's what these little three cubes are for, you get three actions each round, you can spend one action to perform a fight, but then you can spend another cube with it to upgrade one of your dice, right? So that's a neat little ability, but if he's doing the examine action, which is the little uh, orange icon there, him or if he spends a die to help another investigator do it, instead of upgrading one die, he upgrades two. So that's a cool thing. 
He's also fire resistant and has the chance to heal damage in a fight, so that's a cool thing. But here are the special actions, and each one of these uh, investigators has special actions they can do. He can taunt, which makes him kind of tanky, people coming after him. He can spend two cubes, that's why it's got the two cubes sitting here right next to him, to do what's called his big right hook. So he uses his big stone hand to smash somebody, does additional damage, and throws the bad guy across. Or he can pick up and throw furniture at people, which causes damage as well. Costs a couple of cubes to do that. And then you see down here in the bottom right, has the little target icon with the 10. That's how you know what the threat track starts on because it's gonna have the highest number as the first one attacked, okay? So I think he's 10, she's like seven, six, and like four or five something. Johan's not very tough. So you'll uh, organize them in a descending order. The one with the highest number is gonna go here at the bottom in the target and then on around. Now, they've done something neat when it comes to taking damage. These, I grabbed one of the damage tokens to show you guys, but this is like his health track, and you'll see that everyone does have different amounts of health. Everyone's not gonna have the same amount, and you'll sit there and put your little damage tokens on when you take damage, but it's not like normal where when you fill it up, your guy's down or knocked out, whatever. And this one, once the track fills up, you start flipping the tokens instead. Okay, so that would be other damage. If he'd already taken six damage and needed to take a seventh, you know, his track's full, that's when you start flipping these tokens over and they start uh, adding debilitations. And you see this one has a negative fist icon up here, which means it downgrades one of his dice when he's making an attack. So that's an interesting way to show that they have injuries. They basically get, oh, uh, not six, but however many flesh wounds, and then they start taking injuries that will debilitate them, reduce their skills, or cost them action cubes, things like that. And then over here, each character is going to start with a couple of their starting cards, their special items, and then you can possibly have requisition cards. Uh, you'll have so many points depending on the uh, case that you're investigating. Generally, it's going to be anywhere between eight and six, just depending on uh, how many investigators you have going on. In this one, I had six, so that's where these are going to come from. All the white requis uh, requisition cards, and you can see for the Ancient Blade, when Hellboy, who's going to make a lot of fist attacks, when he makes one, he gets to upgrade one die for free. But it cost me two of my six bucks to get that. Plus, it uh, has a chance, like, say, if you roll the good icon when using this weapon, double the result of one test die in addition to any other outcome. That's awesome. This thing is definitely worth the two bucks because he's going to be throwing fist a lot. You can see he's got deep pockets, which gives him a chance to get extra items and Hellboy's pistol, which is kind of awesome and kind of bad at the same time because it's a ranged weapon. You see, he only has yellow when he's firing at range. He doesn't have even orange. Like uh, Hellboy's very inaccurate when he's firing this thing. But if he hits, it suffers five additional damage, and then you have to flip it once you fire it, and it's unloaded at that point. You have to spend an action to flip it, or when you have a rest, they can flip it when they, uh, it's called taking time, but that basically they're resting. All right, I'm not going to get long-winded on everyone, but I just want to show you guys briefly the other investigators that I brought with me. Abe is pretty good at take uh, shooting from range you can see he has his red uh red dice for making ranged attacks he can do some precision shots and slip around so he's pretty slippery and you know plinky snipery that's kind of the way to think of him plus he has special ability to potentially get back action cubes during his turns so that's a, a good thing for him he's a little squishier though so i gave him on the requisition card a lucky charm that allows him to ignore damage from one attack and then potentially get that thing back later on. Over here in our purple, we have Mr. Johan Kraus, which is what my little boy calls Smoke Man, which Smoke Man is the investigator because he's real smart, so he can do his investigations. He can do okay at shooting and defense, but he's very bad in melee. Interesting for him though, he doesn't suffer injuries. So when his track fills up, Instead, he's going to lose his ectoplasmic stability. So that's actually what this other card, one of his starting cards here, 
will go down, but he can use this ectoplasm to do neat other things like possess. He can possess an enemy that's been killed and use that enemy minion to attack someone else. So Johan uh, here can be a lot more useful than you would think, you know, originally looking at the guy. Uh, he also has the ancient text. Uh, generally, most people just have, I'm not going over the ranged weapons because it's just a generic pistol that has to be re uh, reloaded when you roll a skull for all three besides Hellboy. Uh, I gave him the ancient text. When you roll the BRPD icon when testing the examine, and since I know he's going to be doing a lot of my examine, you advance the, the gather track, bah, advance the information gather track in addition to any other outcome. So he basically uh, can increase the amount of points that we get on that. So that's a really good thing for him to have. Miss Liz Sherman over here, she's in yellow and she's our fire chick. Everything she does is all about fire. You can tell because she's got her little flame power coming off her arm there. So my shitty little paint job, but she's like, pew, I'm gonna shoot you with my flames. Really cool. And her stuff is all about the fact that she doesn't take fire damage and she can cause fire damage. She has a special card associated with her as well with her living flame so she can boost this up to cause extra fire damage and cause infernos and other cool stuff like that. But she doesn't want to get it too high because if she does, it can uh, flip, cause the card to flip over and that's when she like explodes and it causes her to take damage. And then everyone else around her takes damage as well. So there's kind of a flirting going back and forth with this. She can cause a whole lot of damage, but she can cause a whole lot of damage to herself and the other uh, investigators if she does it the wrong way. I uh, had one point left, so I went ahead and gave her the Lucky Charm as well. Uh, she is a little bit weaker when it comes to taking damage, so I wanted to try to protect her. Another one that'll give her a free one-off of not taking damage. And then when you take time, you can roll the 50-50 die, the yellow die. And on a blank, you have to discard this card. Otherwise, you get to keep it and keep using it. So there's a chance if you get lucky, you can keep using this card more than once. The way I kind of looked at it, like the lucky charm is one point and so is a bandage. And a bandage only gives you at most, it's like three health back total. If you use like, I think both sides, I'm not entirely sure, but only two or three health. So not a huge amount of health back from a bandage. If you take a huge hit, like say you take five hit, uh, five damage in a single hit, you can use this lucky charm to stop all that damage from coming through. So this is a lot better than a bandage in my opinion. All right, so just to show you where we're at, we have traced the source of the SOS to a stately home. Yeah, I'm gonna read through this last part so you guys know where we're at. Uh, that looks like it's been standing for generations. It's miles from anywhere. So it seems unlikely that your missing agent was here by accident. Quick call to HQ reveals nothing remarkable about the place. So maybe there's nothing weird going on. Could be just that they looked in the basement and need a hand getting out, right? Somehow you doubt it with a sinking feeling in your gut. You check weapons and head on in. And you see at the bottom, this is actually where it told you what uh, minions to put where. And then if an agent interacts with a point of interest, flip this card. The point of interest are going to come from my encounters. And my guess is more than likely going to be these two, since they're the special ones that it very uh, strictly told me where to put on the board and it's far away. So when we pick up on the next video, we're going to start off each, like I said, each of my guys get three actions. You can use them to do the usual stuff, move, shoot, uh, investigate. Things like opening doors, thankfully, are free actions, which is a nice change of pace since more often than not, you have to pay for that. So we're in here and I'm kind of trying to decide. I've got this big open room that I have to investigate first, but do I split my team up and go down both halls? And that'll give me a bigger chance to get more investigations and get myself in a better chance to fight whatever the boss is. Or do I stick together so I can gun down the enemies quickly and try to get to the boss before the Doom Tracker comes? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You guys will have to stay and watch. Uh, we'll be playing through it. Like I said, it is the first time I'm playing through this investigation. So we get to see what happens together. If you don't want to have it spoiled for you, obviously don't watch me play through it. All right, we'll pause here. Make sure you guys stay tuned if you want to check this out. This is going to be a fun one for me just to play Hellboy. Something for, you know, 
just shits and giggles that I don't get to do too often because I usually have a, a plethora lined up and I said, hell with it. It's Thanksgiving. I'm playing something I want to play, something I'm thankful for. All right. I appreciate you guys. Take care. I'll catch you in the next one.